Okay. Good morning. Welcome back. And if you've just added to the class and this is your first lecture, welcome to CCS 395, Digital Technology and Culture. Keep in mind, we're not on Blackboard. We're not big fans of Blackboard. We use that, you can use that link to be redirected to the Notion pages of the class. If you type andreafedi.com slash CCS395, the designator and the number of the class, you will be redirected to the class wiki housed on the servers of a company called Notion, whose app we will start exploring today. And in fact, uh, I gave you some information about it and some screenshot the last time. On Wednesday, we engaged in an activity about the topic of my digital life. You wrote notes and then you shared some of your reflections and findings with the rest of the class. I received, as instructed, copies of the notes you wrote during the class. I just stored them in a separate folder, folder inside my Gmail app for now, I haven't reviewed them, but I will between now and next week. And keep in mind that I want you to retain a digital copy of those notes exactly because later on, the first written assignment will have the same title, the same focus, and so you can revisit, if you want, those notes and use them as a draft, use them as the basis for the assignment, which is not very long, one or, or two pages. Instructions, of course, will follow. On Wednesday, I introduced the first of three digital tools that will be discussed, presented, and applied in class with some hands-on activities and it's an app called Notion. I also listed in the class website the link from which you can start the process of getting the, their professional or pro plan for free by using your Stony Brook address, your EDU address. So if you haven't done so, Please try, click on this link, go through the process. In fact, if you want, you have my permission to do it now so that later on today, when I start demonstrating how you create a page, how you format a page, how you structure a page, if you want to, you can also try the same things on your tablet, on your laptop, or your smartphone, because the app is smartphone friendly. You have two options. If you're using your phone, you can just use the browser. That is perfectly fine. Or after you've created the account, you can install their app. The same is true for iOS devices and laptops. You can either use your browser if you feel more comfortable with it, or you can use their installed app, which of course comes for free and it is ad free, etc. We're talking about a professional app. On Wednesday, I clicked on this link called Screenshots to show you a page on a different wiki that was used the last time that the class was offered where you find a step-by-step -step illustration through screenshots, probably a couple of hundreds of them, of the process of creating a page, adding text to a page, formatting the text, organizing the page, adding images, videos, etc., to the page itself. So you can refer to this for your own self-instruction, of course, Notion also has 
an extensive help database, which includes also nice GIFs, nice short screen videos showing how to do something and the effect of typing a command inside Notion, for example. I forgot to post that link, but I will post it between now and Monday, however, as I said, if you go to Notion's website, it's easy to find that. By the way, I've posted so far digital audio recordings of Monday's and Wednesday's class. On Wednesday, I also produced a video using my iPad Pro. I edited the first part of the video before the discussion, of course, the activity, I cut it out and I still have to edit the second part, then I will upload both. I am shooting a video from a better angle, I hope. So by Monday, you will also find those videos and think that especially for the people who might have missed Monday's class or both Monday and Wednesday's class, okay? If you missed the introduction of the syllabus, get in touch with me via email or come to my office hours or Monday, Wednesday in the library between noon and 1 p.m. in room N, as in North, 3004, or you can come on Zoom on Tuesday or Thursday between 4.30 or 6 p.m. or you can email me to schedule a more convenient time for you to Zoom with me and I'll be happy to review, for example, the syllabus or the class website for any new student. This is the program for today. As we'll do every, pretty much every Wednesday, I've added some information and videos about the app that we are focusing on. So for Notion, I included a link to their very nice page about their history, mission, and core ideas. It's a quick reading. It's not a required reading, just to satisfy your curiosity. It is an interesting company. It is a company that, based on the last valuation, is worth more than $2 billion and they claim they have more than 4 million users. However, they don't say how many of those users are paying subscribers because they also offer a free plan, which is pretty extensive, although lacks some professional features such as versioning. You cannot restore a previous version of the page, which is very important when you do any kind of professional work. You don't want to, you want to have backups, you, you want to have that ability and it's a trending company if you look for example at youtube videos reviewers users describing their experience it is among the cool apps whereas some other apps for example the next one we will examine evernote which has a larger number of paying customers they're not considered as cool by YouTubers at this point. I added the Wikipedia page because it tells you quickly about their history and some data. And I posted links to two videos. I don't know if you're familiar with any of these YouTubers. Ali Abdal became famous as a British medical student who talked about his medical education and also little by little got more and more into not just how to study, how to take notes, but productivity in general. If you take with that term, if you have in mind what YouTube means by productivity, it's a more general term to the point where based on the large number of subscribers, the huge success of his videos, he decided last year, I believe, or 
year and a half ago to leave the medical pro profession, not to pursue a medical career anymore and to become a full-time YouTuber. Thomas Frank has been on YouTube for longer and is successful in terms of the number of subscribers, but doesn't have the million, millions of subscribers that Ali has, but is still uh, an interesting YouTuber discussing productivity in, in a general meaning. And those are two of the many, many videos that you can find on YouTube. We'll watch just a little bit from these two videos. And then if you want, you can watch more at home. And feel free, of course, also to explore on your own and find tips, suggestions, or training videos that would suit your style and help you best. Of course, I will help you. I will demonstrate how to use the app, but if my demonstrations are cut and dry, if my uh, instructions are too professorial, too academic, just go online, just go on YouTube and find someone who's uh, clearer, uh, more, more likable uh, and whose style gets the content through best for you. So we'll watch some of those videos and then we will create a page in Notion. As I said before, if you want to work alongside with me, you're welcome to do so. If for now, for today, you just want to watch what I'm doing, then you'll be able to try at home. Just keep in mind that the first digital assignment, there are two written assignments, there are three digital assignments, plus a big project at the end. But the first digital assignment will be exactly to create a page in Notion. And even the first, the first written assignment, my digital life, will require you to create a page and post that assignment in Notion, share the link with me and of course i will illustrate the process step by step and if anyone needs help you can ask questions in class or you can get on zoom with me we can share screen on either side and i can show you or i can guide you to the steps that are necessary to do anything which doesn't take a lot of time and even though i have a schedule for zoom meet meetings you can simply you can email me and I can get on Zoom if I'm not doing anything else within five minutes, the time to finish a message or, or something I was writing. Or you can use the chat inside Zoom to say, are you available? Are you free? Can you show me this? And I can open my personal room, whose link you find in the syllabus. And we can get in the room and I can show you how to do something. So, Probably will not be able to do all these things, but next Friday we will just continue. So every app will have three or four weeks so that you can get familiar with it, try the first basic things, maybe try also some advanced features, and then if you like the app well enough, you can pick that particular app, Notion for example, for your final project, which is a digital project. And of course, I'll explain the details and the requirements of the project at some point in the future. Now, ambitiously, I listed also the possibility of engaging in a discussion where you tell me your first reactions to the app. Maybe we'll get to it, maybe not. And I'm pretty sure that we'll do this next Friday at some point today or next week, I would like you to come to the podium, put on your Notion account and show the page, simple or not, that you have created and show the others what you've done or why you organize things in a certain way, okay? Any questions about the class in general before I start? Good. Keep in mind that today I don't have an office hour, but I don't have to run away or run to a meeting. So 
especially for if you are new, if you have questions for me, if you want to talk to me after the class, I'll be available. Of course, we'll have to leave the classroom because there is another class after this, but we can talk outside or we can go to my office and sit down and talk, okay? At the end of this page, keep in mind that I have this new section where in a new sub page, I have pictures of the words that I put on the board, support my presentations, and also clickable uh, video, audio files in this case. Later on, there will be video files of the first two classes from January 24th and 26th. There are no assignments for this week. The idea is that if you haven't created an account in Notion, the educational account, do so by next week. That will be the expectation that you're able to open your account and do something for sure during the next week. And readings, written assignments will start from next week. So from now, it's just the idea of getting familiar with Notion, creating the account, perhaps create a page, even just if you write a paragraph or you try some formatting, something basic, just to wet your feet. So let's hear a little bit from Ali Abdal about Notion. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be combining some of my favorite things in life, so that's note taking. Can you hear? Yeah. Okay. Apps, and specifically one of my favorite apps of all time. Do you mind if I keep the lights on, Notion, or do you want me to shut the lights? Using Notion, and we'll split the video up. Are you fine? So firstly, understanding, secondly, memorizing, because it sort of makes a bit more sense. So those were just some of the ways in which Notion, by the way that it's designed, actually helps me personally understand stuff a little bit better in a way that no other note taking app that I've seen does. Um, so that was understanding. Let's move on now to memorizing and how Notion helps with that. Okay, so having understood the topic, how do we then commit it to memory? I will stop here because I want to show you a portion of the other video and then move on to my demonstration. But if you find it interesting, you can continue watching this at home. Of course, he included a lot of knowledge biologic, of, of biology, chemistry, medicine in general. Also, Ali's style is to talk at a pace of about 400 words per minute, <laughs> which can be an obstacle for some. And I know some, I've tried it myself, that will use the custom speed of YouTube videos if you put it at 0.95 or 0.90, it becomes understandable <laughs> and slightly more normal. However, you've seen, even though everything went on so quickly and I would probably not be able to ask you to replicate those processes, but you've seen how simple and at the same powerful this tool can be. The idea that you can fold content and therefore put content out of the way not to clutter your view, not to clutter your mind, and then unfold the section to focus on that. The ability of to move a chunk of your contents or notes into a new page that, that, that gets created just by typing the name of a page and issuing the command, turn this into a page. Those things are very high level, and yet it is something you become familiar within practically an hour from the start or a few days from the moment you begin using this app. And of course, there is more that can be done. Keep in mind that after all, a good portion of the paying customers for the Notion app are corporate organizations, startups, small and medium-sized companies that need collaborative tools that will help them collect, organize, access, retrieve, disseminate information or any kind of content that pertains to knowledge and especially the creation of something new. New knowledge, new products, new strategies, etc. If you understand their position in the market, you can also imagine 
the level of complexity at one end of the spectrum. But at the basis, you have something that allows you to very simply create a page that can become a web page. And I'll show you how with just a couple of clicks, anything you create in Notion can be made public or shared with a specific individual or shared with a group, but that would, depending on the work that you're doing, require a, an enterprise level or a team level kind of subscription that is more expensive and, and beside, beyond uh, what we need to be doing. So I'll go back and take the second video. So by far, the app that I get the most requests from you guys to cover is Notion. And I would say that that's for pretty good reason, since Notion can do a heck of a lot. So they built Notion as an all-in-one workspace, and I would say that that is a pretty accurate description, since Notion really defies traditional categorization. That's because you can do so much with this tool. This and that's why the best label is as Wiki. A it has this beautiful hybrid markdown system. You can also link within documents to other documents. You can create databases. You can create checklists. People build habit trackers and calendars and to-do lists. All kinds of stuff in Notion. Okay, and I'll stop here as well because my purpose was just to give you a sense. The reason I picked a video such as Thomas Frank's video is not because today you can understand and then quickly master these advanced features. But that's to, to give you a visual of the extreme flexibility of apps such as Notion and other apps that we will examine during the semester. Because it is in the nature of knowledge-based, knowledge-geared, apps to offer the users the ability to reorganize the content in many different ways to suit the nature of the task at hand during a particular day or during a particular time in the day. The ability to filter out only certain content by status as he did by content by creation, by any of the properties that you can attach to a page in such a way that whenever you want to direct your focus only towards what is relevant for the task at hand, then it doesn't matter how many hundreds or thousands of pages and notes you have. Within a minute, within a few clicks, you're able to build a temporary collection which makes you in touch with the content you need for a project. And of course, he's talking about the production of videos because that is his main business. But you can imagine yourselves as students how this flexibility can be applied in regards to the kind of assignments or projects that you have to undertake during your classes in such a way that you have one place, one workspace where you can dump everything from your notes to PDFs of readings, to links or embedded videos. And then at any time when you just need to work on that particular assignment in the organic chemistry class or in the sociology class that you are taking, you can issue instructions and limit your view to just the content that is relevant. And then the more you work on it, the more you can reorganize what you have in front of you, what you have on your screen to fit the need for your complete focus on completion of the task. Because at any point you can say, I want to exclude this because it's not necessary or because I'm done with it and continue with other bits and pieces of information and notes. So I will continue myself with the demonstration by 
creating a page in Notion and doing something very simple, nothing of the sorts. I didn't pick videos that included the first basic steps exactly because I'm covering those. These are just to stimulate your mind and to whet your appetite to show you how interesting and powerful uh, tools such as Notion can be and how open they are. And their open nature is best to fit the kind of intellectual work that you do now at a university, but most of you will be doing in the future. Because most of you, after your university degree or degrees, if you go on to take complete a master or even a PhD, most of you will become cognitive professionals. That is to say professionals who instead of being assigned to repetitive tasks in which you have to follow checklists and go step by step, you'll be assigned often or most of the time tasks and project that require you to gather the knowledge to complete the project and require you to produce new knowledge to support the completion of a project. In that sense, your university degree will introduce you to an intellectual world. Because when we talk about the knowledge industry, or in a wider sense, the knowledge-based economy, we also refer to the fact that most essential work at the top or the higher level of the job market require the constant handling of knowledge. Okay, okay, so it, it never ends. It, it is a constant, a continued learning process which works best if you have the right tools, if you have the right instruments. Of course, in your workplace of the future, you might not have a choice because your company is using a certain kind of software for this kind of project. Right now, you do have this flexibility and through this class, you have the opportunity to explore some of these apps, which you might also want to include in your portfolio or resume when you apply for a job, because it'll make you different as a candidate, as an applicant from the next guy who's just listening Word, Excel, or maybe some kind of statistical software, okay? I've opened my Notion account. So I logged in into my Notion account. If you were following earlier, when I do that, just a minute before the start of the class, you must have seen that I just typed notion.so. From there, I clicked on login. I put in my Stony Brook email, andrea.fedi at stonybrook.com edu and which point I picked connect via Google which you should also do because it makes your account more secure and after I specified my university email account I had to put in the university login and the university login which is based on MFA on a multiple factor authentication sent a message to my phone asking to confirm that it was indeed me accessing this file. Security is very important, right? So you should also be professional about this and include these security features. It only takes a second or two. It only adds a few seconds to the procedure, but it shows the kind of professional that you are now or in the future, the kind of attention to details that are important in a work environment that you uh, have for these things. So once I log in, I have my work space, which includes a lot of different things, right? You, you can see on this side by a lot of things right now though, don't be distracted by all the bits and pieces you see on the screen. Just focus on the creation of a page. 
And there are three ways to create a page. We'll go through all of them in time. Today, we'll opt for the simplest way, which is, you, you cannot see it here, but I'll show you in a moment. You have at the very end of the sidebar with all the workspaces or pages that were created, in your case, when you open a new account, uh, you just have some sample pages. So it will not be as cluttered. And in my case, you can see that I can scroll up and down. That's how many uh, collections of pages or single pages I have. You'll have fewer to be distracted by. At the very end, you have this space that has a plus sign, and then it says new page. And that is as simple as it can be creating a page, which can be a website, which you can turn into a blog and make it public if you want. The other two ways to create a page, oh, by the way, besides the plus sign in here, you can see how in other places here, here, the plus sign is either fixed, always visible, or comes up when you move your cursor, move your mouse above it. So not only you find the plus sign that allows you to create a new page at the end, but you also find it here in this section called private, or if you want to create a sub page in this section, then you pick the plus sign next to an existing page to create a sub page to start clustering pages, creating a group of pages, okay? So nothing could be simpler. The other two ways, which are more advanced, but especially the second one, equally simpler, easy to get. The other two ways of creating a page is, the second one is typical of wikis. Once again, confirmation that this is what we're dealing with. And I said that among private apps, Notion is one of the few that retains the use of the term wiki as opposed to Evernote, which rarely mentions it in their documents or in their marketing uh, material. That is to say, inside a traditional wiki, you create a page by creating a link to a page that doesn't exist yet, as we saw Ali Abdal do. And then you click on that page and you create it. And it is as simple as that. Of course, when you do that, the page you create will become a sub page, a sub element that belongs to the page where the link was created, which is very important to know because if you delete the page, the sub pages will also go. Finally, the third way which you've seen Thomas Frank do is to create a page from inside a database which appears in the simple form of a table. And in the first column, you type the title of the page that doesn't exist. You type it in the first column of that table and immediately the open button will appear in that cell of the table. You click open and you are magically transported into the new page and you can start typing. And typing will be everything we need to do to create a new page that goes online within seconds. The moment the modifications, the changes you've made are registered by the servers at Notion they become public. In fact, if I, uh, uh, later on, I'll put the link to the page, the new page I created and make it public, you'll see next week how any change I make will be visible to you on your devices in real time, which, as I said, is one of the reasons why I like something like Notion better than Blackboard, which relies on the hard-coded, conventional way of opening something, typing something, then saving it, publishing it, and posting it, okay? In here, everything is immediate. Everything is live. There is no waste. So once again, I'll...
scroll down and show you, you see new page at the end. That's where I will be operating. And now it is typical for Notion to go into this modality where the new page sits on top of everything else because everything happens quickly. So you might want to just do something here, give it a title, choose the kind of page you want to create, type some text, and then you just click here and you go back to what you were doing. However, if the process of the creation of this page is more involved, what I will do is to make it the central focus by clicking on open as page. And now I have all the focus, all the attention in here. I can also make the workspace disappear and I'll zoom in so that everyone can follow. See here, I have share. So the moment I click in here, this page becomes public, can be seen, viewed only, not modified, but viewed by anyone with this link, which I will then post on our class web page. And I will type the title of the page, test page. And as you see, there are in gray various options, including the simpler. Press enter to continue with an empty page or pick a template. And this is what we'll do. We'll just click enter. And now we have a clean canvas where I can just type. And I'm a terrible typist and this keyboard is awful. So forgive me if I'm slow and make mistakes. So I can write in here anything. One thing Ali is good at is typing. He's an incredible typer. Typist about 170 words per minute. Um, 17 words per minute. Okay. So I created a block of text, which right now, if you have the link to this page, can be seen by anyone. And I just click enter and I create another paragraph. Okay. And as I said before, I don't need an HTML editor. I'm essentially creating a web page right now, right? Which doesn't have to be involved with knowledge related, highfalutin kinds of tasks, right? It could be a blog, it could be an announcement, and I could just continue to place text. Of course, when I have text, I want to be able to format it. And there are several ways to format text in a Notion page. The simplest is to select something. And then you see the moment I select, I have various options. For now, I will ignore some of them and just focus on the formatting. If after selection, I want to apply bold, italics, underline, strike through to this block of text, I'll just select one of them. However, I can also just press Control B for bold, Control I for italics, Control U for underlined, and wiki tools or software apps that are descendants of the original concept of the wiki all usually retain this ability to also use markdown. Markdown is a simple way of using the keyboard to codify in the most, uh, in the least technical way, the formatting. So an alternative way of producing bold in this system is by typing 
two asterisks and then you see that the asterisks have disappeared and the word once I close this block the word has become bold for italics is just one asterisk before and after a block of text for underlined is just one uh, yes one under under sign underscore line the, 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 the low hyphen before and after the word that you want to underline this kind of coding applies also to the creation of headings so again I can type something bring up the menu and then choose to format something as a heading or I can use markdown for example for a first level heading I put this number sign then I have to type I have to put a space bar and you see right away I have heading one in gray because I know that everything and if I want to create a second level heading to collect examples about formatting, I'll, to, I'll put two of those signs. Again, I have to press space, and immediately I have heading two there. I don't know if you're able to see it, I'll bring it up, and I'll write formatting. However, I'll show you just one last thing before we close this. You see that every time I create a new page, I have type slash for commands. I can simply type something. It's not really programming. I do this and I type table of contents. Of course, I can opt for this right away. And there I have it. Without any coding, I have a clickable table of content. And I could have put slash sound, slash audio, slash video, slash emoji and all those things come up just by time.